So in this video, I want to talk to you about yet another variation of annuities, uh, which can be referred to as infrequent annuities. Uh, what does that mean? Let me try and explain using an example. Let's go back to our rich and benevolent uncle, who has promised to give you $500. But instead of saying that, look, I'm going to give you this $500 every year, he says, I'm going to give this to you every two years. And I'm going to do this over the next 14 years. And I'm going to give you the first $500 starting two years from today. Well, uh, what would the timeline look like in this case? Um, it sounds like an annuity, but not quite, because not, not everything is happening in uh, each year, right? But it is still an annuity in the sense that A, you are going to be getting a constant cash flow, okay? You are going to be getting that constant cash flow at regular intervals. It just so happens that here the interval is uh, two years long, uh, and you're gonna be getting it for a certain number of years, uh, in this case, over 14 years. So if you wanted to represent this on a timeline where each, uh, each uh, interval represents one year, as we have done so in the past, then really what you're saying is that you're going to get the first 500 two years from today, then year three is going to go by, and then you're going to get the next 500 four years from today. And you can see, you can kind of see where this is going. The next one is going to be here at the end of year six. And so you would end up going all the way out till the end of year 14. At the end of year 14 is when you're going to get your uh, last last uh, $500 cash flow. It is still a seven-year annuity. Again, what defines an annuity and the term of that annuity, or the reason why we're calling this a seven-year annuity, because you get seven 500s. Don't define an annuity based on the number of time periods you're going out into the future, right? So this is not a 14-year annuity. This is a seven-year annuity. It's just so that it, it goes just goes out to 14 years, given the nature of it. Okay, so now the question that you're facing is that what is the uh, present value of this? Uh, this poses somewhat of a problem, right? Because, uh, because you're not used to seeing this kind of stuff. You do kind of see that this is an annuity, regular intervals and everything. But how do you implement uh, this formula, this present value equals to C, uh, C into 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R raised to the power T. Uh, you've seen this formula, right? This divided by R. Uh, this is the formula that we use for an ordinary annuity in which the first cash flow is occurring at the end of year one, year two, so on and so forth. But nothing like that seems to be happening. Uh, however, what if I told you that maybe we could modify this timeline as follows? Let's suppose that you again say that, look, this is year zero. Let me define one time period as a two-year interval. So let's suppose that you go to another planet, let's suppose, and over there, every two years on Earth is like one year on that planet. So then on this timeline, one represents a two-year interval on Earth or a one-year interval on this planet. And on this planet, therefore, you're getting the first 500 here. And on this planet, therefore, the next 500 is happening after, well, two years on this planet, but really this is a, this is a two, well, one interval that represents two years on this timeline. And you're getting the next 500 here. So this, as you can probably imagine, would look like this, where on this timeline, you'd go out to like year seven. Well, it's technically not year seven, it's time period seven, and you'd be getting your first 500 here. So you're like, oh, this looks nice. All of a sudden, I have converted the original timeline uh, into a new one, which looks very much like an ordinary annuity. Why? 
because the first 500 that I'm getting is one time period, not one year, one time period away. And then I have a series of these 500s. So this is great. You might be inclined to use this formula. However, be very, very careful because again, this is just one time period, but this is not one year. This is not one year. And the reason why that is important is uh, because your interest rate is given as an annual interest rate. And so this is the key. Please pay attention. As you are waiting for this first 500 to come to you, this 500 is uh, on the original timeline two years away, which means that when you wait the first year, you lose out on your opportunity to earn 4%. So basically you, you don't earn 4%. And on top of that, when you're waiting for the second year, you not only lose 4% for that second year, you also lose out on the 4% that you could have earned on the 4% you earned in the previous year. My main point is that if somebody says, you know, what is your opportunity cost? What is it that you're losing out on as you're waiting for these two years or this one time interval to go through? You'd say something like, 1.04 squared squared and then you subtract one from it which solves out to which solves out to 0 0.0816 or 8.16 percent this is the key Right. So we're, what we're saying here is that over this one year, one time interval, the rate of return that you could have earned while you were waiting is 8.16 percent because you could have made 4 percent the first year here and then 4 percent here. That alone is 8 percent. But on top of that, you could have gotten this an extra 0.16 percent because you could have earned 4 percent on the original 4 percent. So this is the appropriate interest rate that you want to use on this timeline. So it's okay to use this formula, but please, please, please bear in mind, this is critical. This will also help you later on. The duration or the, uh, I want to say the, the way the timing of the cash flows, the timing of the cash flows must match the timing of the discount rate. Previously, uh, in all our discussions, we've been dealing with annual cash flows, cash flows that are occurring every year. And therefore, we were just using annual interest rate. Here, the cash flow is occurring every two years, right? So this is one interval, but it represents two years. If my cash flow is occurring every two years, the rate that I need to use here should also reflect the two year interest rate or the two year discount rate, which in this case would be 8.16%. And so now if you wanted to determine the present value over here, you'd say the present value would be 500, 500 into, you do one minus one over one plus 8.16%. So I'd write this as 1.0816. I'm gonna raise this to the power seven because there are seven such intervals, so seven. And I'm going to divide all of this by 0 0.0816, which is the appropriate interest rate here. And so this is how you would determine the present value of this quote unquote infrequent annuity, which if you do the math, will solve out to 2000, about $2,589. Uh, actually, just about right, $2,589. And so this is how you would deal with a situation in which uh, you have an infrequent annuity or more generally, uh, an annuity in which the cash flows are not occurring at annual intervals, but more than annual intervals, like every two years, every three years, every five years so on and so forth.